Hi, my name is Chris Montgomery. I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of TN3 Qs. This week we are continuing our series on Azure and some of the benefits that you can experience from using this solution. In today's episode, we're going to talk about is not to say a deviation from what we've been discussing as it relates to Azure, but really more specifically how Office 365 and Azure can work together to benefit your organization. Now, the question that tends to come up more often than not these days is, is especially in smaller organizations, do I still require a server? And that is really up for discussion. And that's why I have with me today our cloud services manager, Aaron Oliver, once again. Aaron, it's good to see you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So Aaron, first and foremost, do clients, based on their size and needs, still require a server? And what do they need to be thinking about whether to determine that? Chris, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, today, with the way most environments are going, a lot of people are moving to Office 365. Mm -hmm. um, this series is on Azure. When you move to Office 365, you get an Azure Active Directory. That's what controls your users on the back end. Okay. Uh, a lot of our smaller clients have a server just to serve up files mm -hmm. and be their Active Directory controller yeah. uh, for security and permissions to those files. Sure. Um, so smaller clients, say 20 users and less, and maybe even some larger clients, uh, might consider you know replacing their single server mm -hmm. with an Azure slash Office 365 environment. Okay. Um, Things to think about when doing that is, you know, do I have any line of business apps that require SQL mm -hmm. or are my vendors capable of this? Uh, what we find is a lot of our clients now are moving to the cloud for most of their line, is line of business apps like cloud uh, QuickBooks or mm -hmm. cloud ERPs, cloud CRMs, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing that already and all you have is files and Active Directory on site, mm -hmm. uh, there's a good chance that you could possibly get away without having to re-up or re-spend on the hardware for that server yeah. and move to something like Office 365 for your email, which could also replace your file server. Um, but on top of that, use uh, Windows 10 to join workstations and PCs to the Azure Active Directory. Mm -hmm. uh, and then through a third party like ThrottleNet, have a RMM tool that monitors and maintains any kind of policies and things like that that you would have normally done with group policy on that single mm -hmm. Active Directory server. So understanding then, Aaron, that it's not always necessary to have a server in place these days, why not? And more specifically, what has changed that now allows for this to be the case? Yeah, so Microsoft and Office 365 and their Azure offerings have started to release new features monthly okay. uh, for about a, the last year, year and a half. And with some of those features, uh, OneDrive and SharePoint, uh, both products that have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. They've kind of revamped the way that OneDrive works and that they have a files on demand feature now. Uh, I think what this means uh, in the market is that you're going to see a need for file servers on premises mm -hmm. to kind of go away. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is that they offer so much built in storage to your Office 365 accounts, mm -hmm. and additional storage is extremely cheap, um, mm -hmm. talking $20 to $30 on the terabyte oh, wow. uh, to store your files out there and put shares. So Aaron, now that we understand why this is happening, what people need to be thinking about, what are some of the benefits they might derive if they elect to go ahead and push everything through Office 365 and Azure? Yeah, so there's there's quite a few benefits actually. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for, for one, we've already talked about a little bit the fact that you don't have to re-up or repurchase your server when it goes into life, so you're gonna save yeah. money on the, the hardware, the CapEx, yeah. um, converts everything to you know an OpEx or a service expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, you're also going to reduce the cost of um, backup and storage on-site. Mm -hmm. um, Backing up your cloud services is much, much cheaper than backing up the traditional on-prem server because a lot of times mm -hmm. that requires a whole other server to back up yeah. your, your production server. Or an appliance and then the Correct. associated yeah. costs. Yeah. And so, and then the, the biggest reason uh, when we have people come and ask us about moving their file or file server to Azure um, or to SharePoint with OneDrive and Office mm -hmm. 365 is the added benefit of your remote workforce. Mm -hmm. um, that allows your remote users to connect in and get access to their files right on their PCs from anywhere they have an internet connection without having to run a VPN connection, mm -hmm. or uh, it also keeps the company from having to repurchase new VPN licenses when they renew their firewalls, things like that. So another, another cost savings there. Well, I want to thank you so much again for joining us in today's episode of TN3Qs. Aaron, I appreciate your time as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Keep in mind that this is a multi-part series on Azure and how it can benefit your organization. So we'd certainly appreciate if you caught us in our next episode. And in addition, if you have any questions or want more information on how ThrottleNet or the Azure product can benefit your organization, please feel free to check us out online at throttlenet.com or give us a call. Again, we do appreciate your time today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on TN3Q.